is reduce that to three brackets, okay. and it's going to be for fifty thousand up to fifty thousand. You pay three point five. Above fifty thousand and up to one hundred fifty thousand, you're going to pay five point five percent, and everything above one hundred and fifty, you pay seven point five percent. So it reduces the number of brackets, which helps business. It's more favorable to the business community, and it's going to reflect and offset the benefit that increasing enticing business to come and utilize and do business here in Louisiana, help them to come in, it's going to offset any potential downfalls of those modification of those brackets. Yeah, because we've lost business here in Louisiana at times when people are realizing that the tax structure and the tax bracket that they're in for their their business is going to be higher than somewhere else. Yes, it is. And um, Louisiana, again, as I mentioned, we have the highest you know, sales tax and income tax right. and the personal income tax as well in terms of these brackets. Or um, there's a lot of states that don't have any income tax. So, you know, again, this puts us in a better competitive, puts us in a and our ability to compete with other states that allow to entice both business but also provide a benefit for individuals as well on their personal income taxes. And it also, on franchise taxes, it's also going to reduce the franchise tax. You know, there's uh, different levels of franchise tax that we pay. The tax is $1.50 per 1,000 taxable capital gains, uh, 300000 they pay $3.00 per 1,000, and, and so what it's going to do is basically uh, take the, eliminate any franchise tax below 300,000 and reduce that rate to 2.75 on that above. So it helps the franchise tax and helps businesses and puts more, uh, 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 puts us in a more favorable climate in terms of attracting and allowing us to attract business to the state. Well, and so, so on many levels, it looks like this one makes a lot of sense. Put that one back up, Jen, if you don't mind, and let people know what they can uh, vote for. So a vote for Amendment 2, which is tax reform, would lower the maximum rate of the income tax and allow removal of a major state tax deduction, triggering statutory reforms for individual and corporate income and franchise taxes, as outlined by uh, Ziza Rang here for us. A vote against would keep the Constitution's current tax rates and the requirement to allow a deduction for federal taxes paid, which would stop all of the statutory re reforms. And so, again, a really good recap on two. I know it's complicated, but, but people, I think, now will have a little bit better idea that this could be an advantage both personally for business and for uh, some of those uh, taxes that will affect uh, people coming in. And it truly, it, it reflects true reform in terms of our tax structure, something that we desperately need and have been trying to uh, implement. I know for the, the two, t from last term and from this session, we always try to do tax reform, but at least this, if it passes, will be the first uh, attempt to truly improve and benefit the tax structure in Louisiana. Really good information, Z. Uh, we appreciate it. We're going to take another short break. When we come back, a whole lot more with Z Zerang about what's happening with these amendments. Don't go anywhere. For years, Tony Alford and Priscilla Larpenter have been the foundation of what is now Alford & Associates. Their passion and vision have been embedded company-wide. It's about making sure that our community is strong and protected for the next generation. I have such respect and pride for our company, and I'm excited to bring new and innovative ideas to our clients. It's quite simple. It's the mindset of our organization to protect you from life's hardships. Your benefits are our business. Welcome back. We've missed you. We know it's been tough. Because rebuilding your business isn't for the faint of heart. Your business needs a jump start. And we're here to help. Introducing Surge, symmetrical speed fiber internet from Etel Business. Revved up data speeds at 30% off, plus three months free. We're glad you're back. And we're here to make your business surge. Over the years, Louisiana's Cajun Bayou has seen more than its fair share of challenges. We're no strangers to adversity, and we know what it's like to struggle. These are unprecedented times, and while people will say this time is like nothing they've ever seen, we've heard that before. And just like all the other times, we'll get through this. Remember the good times. Remember Lafouche. 
U Drop Shipping and Crating Pros is a highly versatile company that will ship any size, any weight, anywhere. U Drop Shipping and Crating Pros is a full service logistics provider focused on expert packing, crating, and transportation solutions. The local oil and gas industry utilizes our professional crating and shipping services that support their offshore and international needs. U Drop Shipping and Crating Pros is authorized and recognized to construct shipping crates built for exports. U Drop Shipping and Crating Pros, now at our new location at Capitol Boulevard. Pelican Waste and Debris is your local company. We don't just work here, we live here and understand the unique challenges that face our region. Our commitment to our community and customers and love for Louisiana keeps us motivated. Pelican meets every residential and commercial service need, offering roll-off, front load, and compactor services, ideal for hotels, restaurants, apartments, construction or industrial sites, and much more. We also make recycling simple and cost efficient offering single stream recycling program options. We have set the highest standards for environmental protection, community engagement, and guaranteed client satisfaction. Visit pelicanwaste.net or call us at 985-873-9553 to save money with hassle-free service. Our team has over 100 years of experience, so we know how to make you happy. The sky is the limit, so fly with the Pelican. Hello and welcome back to this edition of Bayou Time. So very glad that you are joining us. I'm your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker, being joined by Jerome Zizarang, state representative of District 52. Jerome, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Keith. Yeah. And, you know, talking about one, uh, what was uh, simple, two, a little bit more complicated, three and four, um, are these particular uh, amendments, these constitutional amendments, uh, are a little bit more simple, but really important that we consider and talk about uh, what they mean. They are, they are. And, and again, in the spirit of full disclosure, I'll just let you know I'm voting for all four because uh, Amendment 3 and 4, 3 is, is somewhat confusing because it, it talks about taxing authority for levy districts. And everyone around here knows how important the levy Ooh, district is. Boy, and, and, and the work that the, they do. Yeah, the work that they do and how important and beneficial the system is in maintaining it. But this does not affect our levy district in any way. Essentially what this does is allows for those levy districts that were created after 2006, mm -hmm. after Katrina, right. to allow them to have the same authority that our levy districts, New Orleans and other levy districts created before 2006, have that authority to assess up to 5% property, 5 mil property tax without a vote of the people if the board votes to do that. Okay. So it just gives them the same authority that other levy districts have. It doesn't affect our tax. It doesn't affect the levy district tax. It doesn't affect our levy district in any way because Terrible and Levy Conservation District, South Lafouche Levy District, North Lafouche Levy District, they already have that authority. Right. And they put those into place early on and asked the people. And, and so we were able to do that early on. So we're kind of ahead of the curve in our area. So this in three is just going to allow other people to catch up with what we're already doing right and it allows them the funding that they need to provide protection the critical protection that we are implementing now and, and credit to the folks in louis you know here in terrebonne and lafouche who are taxing themselves mm -hmm. but it they were given the authority they had that authority to impose that and that was the seed money that got these things started mm -hmm. that that property tax it just allows these other levy districts and quite I'll just go over quickly the names that it's five, it's going to affect five levy districts the Chenier okay. Plain levy district in Calcasieu Cameron and Vermilion the Iberia Parish levy district Squirrel Run levy district in Iberia Parish Squirrel okay. Run I don't know where okay. they came that name yeah, really St. Tammany levy district and St. Tammany and Tangipahoe levy district so it's really going to affect those and the thing with this is so it has to pass state wide okay and it has to pass in each individual district okay. if it fails on any of those then it just stays like it, it is stays like it is but we we understand the importance of levy protection and you mentioned several areas that have a lot of flooding issues that's right and so those things need to be considered so I, I'm based on that I'm gonna vote to yes for that one as well just so they have the it was categorically a five storm we had very little uh, issues because of our levy boards and what they've been able to do. Oh, our system is, is very important in terms of both maintaining the, our coastal communities, but also um, our uh, in terms of our ability to, to economic growth and keep people here right, and just protect right, our local right. communities. Without the levies, Terrible and Parish would be in desperate 
in shape, yeah, as you know. Far, so, far worse than we were from yeah. this storm. So let's talk a little bit about four. And so this is the other one that's uh, on the ballot that uh, needs a little better explanation. So four is really allowing the uh, state to increase its ability to tap into dedicated funds in the event there's a deficit. Okay. So if um, it's projected the revenue estimate income uh, projections are, well, we anticipate having a deficit this particular year, like we did when our first term. We right. had over a right. $2 billion deficit that we had to address. And right now within the Constitution and the way it is within the state statute is the governor can assess or in addition to implementing certain measures to ward off a deficit, mm -hmm. he can also sweep 5 percent of dedicated funds to state entities and agencies. What this would do would increase from 5% to 10%. So it just okay. increases the percentages in the event there's a deficit to hold off and minimize the requirement that either you cut services or the alternative is increased taxes. So by doing this, it just frees up some of the money. Yeah, and so it's, it's it, right now we don't have very many options. We've got two options to really affect that versus this, which gives the governor's office a chance to be able to say, we've got this 5% that we can do something with to offset that deficit. That's right. Yeah. So uh, just maybe a little bit of a recap here as we're finishing up uh, of one through four and, and why it's important in your opinion to vote yes for those. Okay. Again, one and two are important because they are going to make significant and fundamental changes in our tax structure. Tax structure. For our internet, It'll provide us to receive revenue that we're missing out on. Right. And again, we're not taking away taxes from any local entities. So right. that's definitely going to make sure that it's just going to streamline. It's going to set up the commission to address that. It doesn't automatically implement it. Two, again, it reduces tax the brackets. Reform. That's significant in terms of reducing the brackets for personal income, corporate, and also franchise. And right. it's doing that by offsetting from the fed removing the federal itemized deduction which right. is important, and that's what allows us to reduce those brackets. Again, three, helping those levy districts that don't have the authority, those five, to have the same authority that other levy districts has. It doesn't increase taxes, doesn't affect our levy district, and four, just increases the percentage of when the, it's projected that there will be a deficit, we can utilize dedicated funds to offset that deficit. And it, it prevents them from making difficult decisions of cutting services or taxing. Or taxing it yes. says, let's use this money to prevent that deficit, and like you mentioned, uh, right when you got in involved, it was a significant deficit, and y'all had to make some really difficult Tough changes. Decisions. We talked about that That's right. and some of the challenges with that. Z, can't thank you enough for spending some time with us today and really going over what we need to do to be aware of how we should kind of vote, and uh, I think it really helps the public, and we appreciate it. Good deal. Remember, I'm going to go vote, and Keith, thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, again, that's Jerome Z. Zerang, uh, State Representative, District 52, taking care of the people, representing the people, and certainly letting us know what we can or can't do in taking care of going out to vote. All right, that'll do it for this segment. Don't go anywhere. A lot more Bayou Time when we continue. for complete peace of mind when buying your next pre-owned vehicle? Trep's got it. Why buy a Trep Chevrolet GM certified pre-owned vehicle? You could save thousands of dollars compared to a new vehicle. Most certified pre-owned vehicles offer a limited bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage and limited powertrain coverage on top of new vehicle warranty. These vehicles have undergone rigorous inspection and come with a vehicle history report and maintenance history. So if you want true confidence, Trep's got it at Trep Chevrolet in Homa. Will I ever see my family again? Do they even remember I'm here? I feel so alone. Do any of these thoughts sound familiar to you? If so, you are not alone. The South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority offers support, counseling, and treatment geared at helping you where you are right now in the midst of this pandemic and your own personal crisis. The South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority, helping people, changing lives. Here's to the straggly ones, the first ones, the hey, I look good with this ones, the black, brown, red, and gray ones, the itchy ones, the ones grown by dad, the ones grown for dad, the I nearly didn't do it this year ones, 
and the absolutely filthy ones. They all raise awareness, raise funds, start conversations, and save lives. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Learn more at Movember.com. No law degree, no amount of experience can supersede the compassion that our firm gives to its clients. One of the secrets is to always know your case better than your opposing counsel knows his or her case. We try to carry those values that we've learned at home into the practice of law. And every client that walks through our door gets 100 years experience when they visit us. Waits and Downer, when you walk in our door, you're part of our family. At Big Wheels Travel Center, the fun and excitement are just around the corner in Bayou Blue. Big Wheels is open 24 hours a day and features 24-hour security, clean restrooms, and a wide selection of beer, soft drinks, and chips for all your needs. While you're there, visit the casino for daily cash prizes and drink specials seven days a week. You'll get the feeling as if you are in a lush Vegas-style casino. Big Wheels also has one of the largest subways in the area. So stop by Big Wheels Travel Center where everyone's a winner. Hello everyone, welcome to Training to Win in Life. I'm happy to be with you today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you that your word will speak to us and instruct us in the ways of righteousness, and you've called us to do great and mighty things for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great service. I'll see you at the end. Today I want to talk to you about He Calls. All right. And I want you to just take note of, and you're going to see it in the early parts of this message, but He's calling us. And I want to, I want to build this thought process around this particular subject. In Luke chapter 13, verse 10, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had... A spirit of infirmity for 18 years. So she had an evil spirit that was influencing her life. It was affecting her body. It was oppressive. And you knew it was oppressive because of what's going to be said in a moment. That it caused her to bow down and could in no wise lift herself up. So in other words, she was completely dependent upon another system. Her system didn't give her the opportunity to stand up straight again. She was really in a bad place. 18 years of it. And I'm sure that she had accepted at some point that this was the culmination of her life and this is how she was going to die. And when Jesus saw her, he called her. So I want you to take note. Jesus saw her and called her to him and said to her, woman, now he's going to give her the outcome. You are loosed. You are free from this spirit of infirmity. He laid his hands on her and immediately, and I want you to take note of this word, she was made straight. In other words, she was made at that moment to regain her strength where she could now do for herself. She stood up straight and the result was she glorified God. How many of you can use some stuff in your life getting straight? So that you can carry throughout all of your days a praise on your lips and honor in your heart because things got straight when Jesus stepped in. But remember, the first thing he does is he calls for you. And he's always calling. He's just always reaching out to you. And he's always got a word. But something happened right here that could have messed up the whole thing. And it was the ruler of the synagogue. The guy in charge of daily worship. And he answered with indignation. He was mad. In other words, like, what right do you have to do this? Now listen to what he says. 
He was mad because Jesus had healed this woman on the Sabbath day. Or in other words, Jesus set her free on the Sabbath day. And so the leader stands up and he says to the people, he gives them instructions. There are six days in which men ought to work. So work then in his mind is how you got healed. You should work to be healed and it's in those days that you should come to be healed but not on the Sabbath day. In other words, on the day that you should glorify God, you should never expect God to show himself good to you because you got to do something to earn it. But in this case, this woman did zero because Jesus called her to him. Amen. So Jesus stood up and he said to him, you hypocrite. Doeth not each one of you, now he's calling them all out. He's calling out leadership. He's calling leadership out. Because they no longer identified with the broken. They no longer identified with the people in bondage. They were snooty, highfalutin, too good for the sinner. You hypocrite. Each one of you on the Sabbath makes free or loosens his ox or his donkey from the stall and leads them away to water. Is that not correct? So tell me this. Should not this woman who was made to glorify God, who has been bound up for these 18 years, should she not be free, loosened from this demon on the Sabbath day? And when they all heard this, his adversaries were ashamed. Or in other words, they were shaken to an awakening because they saw something they hadn't seen before. But the people, they could see that there was some truth here and they rejoiced and glorified God for all that he had done. So today I want to make sure that you understand Jesus is still calling and what caught my attention, so just bear with me because I believe that what I'm going to cover is going to take, it's all true. But Jesus didn't, didn't say to this woman at this moment, you have to believe. He didn't say, you have to have faith. He didn't even have to say, you have to love me. He just said, hey, come here. You know why? Because she already qualified. And he told them why she qualified. Because she was a daughter of Abraham. Abraham had already cut covenant. Abraham had already set things up between he and God and God and man. Jesus was the fulfillment of that. And Jesus says, you're missing the whole point. You still stuck on dotting the I and crossing the T when everything has been prepared for you. And this woman has been bound up for 18 years. And here she is. And she's in the house of worship. And you give her nothing. And the reason for it is because they no longer identified with the hurting and the broken. I also want you to remember something. Jesus bore our sin. And he did it by identification. Because the word says that he stepped into our bow down life. We weren't walking straight. We were off step. But he came in and he stepped into our world by our identification. And the Bible says, and I, and I saw this for the first time when I really stopped to think about it and meditate on it, but that Jesus was made, created, formed to be sin for us so that we could be accepted by Father. So Jesus, listen, was made to identify with the broken so that the broken could know his Father. So when we then are accepted by God, we get his identification. So think about it. So when I am born again, when you're born again, when we're born again, we take on Jesus' identification. But Jesus' identification 
was that he took on the identification of the broken. You know, far too often in church life, what we find church growth on, church growth is normally the swapping of sheep from flock to flock. And there's really not an evangelism or a heartbeat of the church that is for the lost and the needy. If we're not careful, our messages that we preach are about how God takes care of us without ever coming to the place that Father takes care of our needs so that we could take care of them. And somewhere along the line, we lose the them and we get absorbed by the me. Now, I don't know about you, but this is what I believe, that when Jesus hung on that cross, my sin was left there. <laughs> my guilt was removed. My consciousness of failure was over. But we still deal with that all the time. But we say that we believe, but we still fight a battle on the inside that we should never even have to fight because Jesus, His blood settled it all. The Bible says that the blood of bulls and goats required that you had to come back constantly so that more blood could be shed, so that the sinner could be cleansed. But Jesus, once and for all, His blood was shed so there would be no more consciousness of sin. So we're battling as a church on a very inferior situation, like we're still battling with a consciousness of sin instead of ruling and reigning in Christ and going before the Father and gaining His heart and His passion for those that are broken and lost and carrying that message to them when I'm still battling with my failures. Here's the beauty. When my guilt was removed, it's been removed forever. And now I've been given a free pass. I can walk away with God's righteousness. I walk away from my hurt, my pain, my disappointment, my failures, and I get God's righteousness, God's perfect measure. And you know what it does? It allows you to stand back up. See, the woman was bowed over for 18 years. Your sin consciousness causes you to bow down and be afflicted and tore down where you never really take hold of exactly what Jesus did for you. You say, why is that so important? Because I can never minister to someone else out of freedom when I myself am still bound on the inside. So the Bible says Jesus came to take away the sin. Jesus' mission was to take away the sin of the whole world and to reveal the Father to those who receive Him as Lord. Well, if that was Jesus' mission, when is the last time perhaps you considered that might be your mission as well? We know that Jesus bore the sin of, for all mankind. Sin is not the issue no more. But what about taking a position that likewise I come before the Father in order to bear the burden for somebody else? I've come to realize now, it took me a long time, it goes to show you that sometimes we're all slow to catch up what God is doing. But I've, I've begun to discover that in my own personal life, that when I come up against a time frame, when I'm just going through the course of my day, and an oppressive spirit will just show up, and I just feel that, ooh, nastiness all over me. And I kind of like wonder, like, what did I do? Like, where did this come from? And you see how it always starts with, what did I do? That's a consciousness of sin. Instead of maybe being an awakening that God needs somebody to stand against that oppressive spirit for somebody else. It was nothing that I did, but it was something that he's bringing to my attention so that I can take away the oppression of the world. I can stand as an ambassador before God so that those who are now bound can now see the Father. So therefore, isn't it a fact that Jesus stepped into my world so that I could be free. 
When's the last time that you ever consider that in prayer, proclamation, through relationships, you step into somebody else's world to help them find freedom? You see, most of us think that preaching the gospel is about just sharing the word and preaching a God, the message. But sometimes sharing the message is kindness, goodness, peace, joy. It's about just being you. You see, because if you're in the presence of the Father and you're kind and you're receiving it and you're gentle and you're peaceful and you're joyful and you're happy, there's something that nobody else really carries in this world, especially when it's underneath the anointing of God. When your laughter doesn't have to come out of dirty jokes, but it comes out of a spirit of joy, that is completely different than what the world knows. Because the world laughs at crude, nasty stuff. Or it takes us pleasure in crude, nasty stuff. When we find our delight in something that is joy-filled or holiness, or we find joy in that which is right. We celebrate that which is right. The world doesn't find that. So I want to make this statement to you right here, and I, and I hope you get it. So we are free. But I don't know that we really have Christ until I'm determined that I want Christ formed within me. All right, just think about that. Now, I know that I'm born again. I know that I've been transferred out of darkness into light. But something on the inside of me has to demand me, from me, that Christ will be formed in me. If not, then how do I carry him? Just in head knowledge? Are out of experience. See, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all ye who are, who are that labor and are heavy burden. Why? Because he wants to take away your burden. Because remember, he carried your cross. And he says, If you do this, if you come to me, I will. God says, Jesus says, I'm going to give you rest. Because, remember, I stood in the midst of thee. I prayed for you. I interceded for you. If you don't believe that Jesus interceded for you, go read John 16, 17. All those things. Jesus was praying for you. He was your first. He was your intercessor. He stood in the gap for you. He gave you the outcome. He says, so if today you're bowed down like the woman that was afflicted by a spirit of infirmity for 18 years, if you're head heavy laden, just come to me and I'm going to give you rest. Well, shouldn't it be the same thing that if we look at Jesus like that, shouldn't the world be able to come to us and we're capable under the anointing to bring them rest? Because I carry it with me. I carry peace in me. I carry joy within me because I've been fellowshipping with the one who gives me that. He's been formed within me. So if I see Jesus and I'm him as his ambassador and he says, come to me, well, why aren't we looking at it like this? The world should be able to come to me. And we say, oh, no, they can't come to me. They have to go to Jesus. They got to find somebody who represents him. Amen. Come to me. Every one of you who are heavy laden, you bow down and I'm going to give you rest. And he says, take up my yoke and learn of me. Learn how to be gentle. Learn how to be humble. Learn how to be refreshing. Learn how to be restful. And this is what he says. I am meek and lonely of heart. That means I'm in complete trust of everything Father's put before me. I have to trust him. But I do. And he says, and you shall find rest unto your souls, because when you learn of me and you learn how to trust Father, you're going to find rest to your souls. And he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, God has not put something on me that I can't carry. And it's the same thing with us. Listen to me. You know, you fill this place up three and four or five times over and over and over again. You start taking on an attitude. I'm anointed by God to carry his presence into this life. And I can bear the burden of the world and I can pray for them and deliver them from this oppressive spirit that bows them down. And when I come into their presence, I don't have nothing to hide from them. They can come to me and I will find rest for them. You say, oh, you're talking like you, Jesus. Well, I thought that's what we are. Jesus is a replacement in the earth. We're the body. So when we all look at this at the end of the day, isn't it all about union with Christ? My daily union with Jesus? 
Isn't it about leading people to get connected with Him? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 through 21, it says, For then we are, we're free to be ambassadors. An ambassador is an accredited, an, excuse me, an accredited diplomat sent by a country as to its official representative. In other words, you're going to represent the kingdom of God and you are the ambassador. Well, what do you represent? Well, you represent the one who says, come to me and I'm going to give you rest. Come to me. Listen, I remember, I remember my mother being born again and my mother's life changing. I remember as a young, young man coming into the presence of an Elman Odimon and other men that were going to Word of Life Church in Chauvin and they looked different, they sounded different, they talked different and they weren't afraid of their faith. I was attracted to Christ in them. When is it going to become relevant to us again that we carry the answer? It's Jesus. Christ formed in me. He's the hope of glory. But we're afraid of that because we've been told that's arrogant and proud. Well, it is if you're arrogant and proud. But we're not talking about being arrogant and proud. We're talking about being meek and lowly. But carry the goods. I don't have to boast on myself. I don't have to brag on myself. I just give people an opportunity to now, if you want to be a part of what I'm doing, hey, Senator, I do this. Would you like to look at this every day? I can send you a... I'd love to do it. Come on. And then they text me back. I got a federal judge that sends me stuff every day. Why? Because I just made an opportunity. He said, well, you're Pastor Dwayne. No, I'm Dwayne Bland. I just fill this role, but I'm Dwayne Bland, and you are who you are, and you carry the same person I do. Amen. Don't put me on a pedestal and don't live up to your own. Don't shuck yourself and say, well, I just don't qualify because I'm not in your position. Yes, you are. Amen. You're just in a different role in the community. So are your ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech. In other words, as if God called you by us. You see, it's like God's calling them, how? By us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Or in other words, God is pleading for you through me. I take time to go before Father. Father gives me insight for what's the conditions of the world. I lift up the conditions of the world and I pray in, in, in that stead. And what ends up happening is I pray them in by the call of God. So here's the word. If you want to know would you ever prophesy, here's what you prophesy. Be ye reconciled to God. I don't know what to say about the world. I just told you. Standing before God. Father, as your ambassador, I look into the world, the, the fields that are white, ready for harvest, and I shout your word. Be ye reconciled back to God. For he hath made, there's that word again, he hath made him to be sin for us. He made intercession for us who knew no sin, but he allowed himself to become acquainted and informed by God what they were going through that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, some of us have forgotten what it's like to be lost in the world. Jesus never knew what sin was, but Father God made sure that he knew what it was so that he could be the advocate, the first among many brethren. See, far too often we are occupied with our own pleasures and dreams, and the citizens of our generation just stagger around with burdens that they shouldn't have to be carried, and they're breaking down. You know why? Because we haven't shaken ourselves from this identity. We need to identify with the loss and it's time because he's calling. There are people that are going to be lost forever in a devil's hell 
if we never take our place back. Listen to me. We're in a day right now. They call good bad. And bad good. America's major cities are burning down with crime. And they won't tell you the truth. Because their agenda will be flipped upside down. But it's being spoken. If you're looking for the truth, it is burning down. Well, what hope do we have? You and me and us and every other believer who's willing to wake up and to shake themselves from this sleep and this slumber and say, Lord, here I am. How do I pray today, sir? How do I call on the name of Jesus and release the captives? I believe that prayer is no longer a privilege. I believe communing with God is now a stern calling. It's something that we have to do. And I want to show you this as we conclude. Success of transforming this generation doesn't depend upon your experience because most people say, well, I'm not experienced. I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to do these things. You've been around long enough. You know how to do those things. I'm inexperienced. No, transforming this generation does not depend upon your experience. And it sure does not depend upon the size of your adversity or your adversary. That is nothing. What's going to determine Success in transforming this generation is total willingness to obey God and to partner with Jesus. That's it. And if you're awakened, you will be a people, we will be a people with a backbone of steel. We're going to have determination set in concrete. But our hearts will always be filled with love for the lost. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm delighted to be with you. Look... We say this always, but it's just truth. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you can do it. Call upon the name of the Lord, and the Bible says you shall be saved. Call out to Jesus, ask him to be the Lord of your life, and he will. He just comes in because he loves you. He just needs permission to come in. So, Lord, I'm asking you to move throughout this whole community, and may the residents of our generation become subject to the Spirit of God, knowing Jesus is Lord. Amen. Now, guys, if you need a church, Thibodeau Family Church is always here for you. We're located at 785 North Canal Boulevard, Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. We'd be delighted to have you come and worship with us. Now, I always want to remind you of this. It's not that difficult, but it's true. As long as you keep Jesus as the Lord of your life, you'll always win in life. God bless you. See you soon. I'm Rhonda Alford, your host for To Your Health with Terrebonne General Health System. Our weekly show provides the latest in healthcare specialties only offered by Terrebonne General. Join us each Wednesday at 7 p.m. to stay up to date with the latest innovations in health. Terrebonne General provides healthcare breakthroughs in cardiology, cancer care, women's health, health and wellness, and much more. You don't want to miss our next To Your Health. See you then. Bruce R. Dub handles business and residential hurricane claims. We have over 14 years experience dealing with insurance claims for hurricanes with proven results. We handled hurricane claims before Hurricane Ida and will be here for years to come after. We've recovered millions for business owners and homeowners. So if you need help with your hurricane claim, let us fight for you. Go to our website and fill out a form for a free claim review or give us a call. Bruce R. Dove, Attorneys at Law.
My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. I'm a better neighbor because my service has taught me how important it is to be a team player. My training helps me in my classes when I must give attention to detail to the task at hand. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting NationalGuard.com. IU Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. We're going to start Trevor. Um, Taysom's playing in this game and uh, we've had a good week of practice. And Sean, what do you think of the last couple of years, whether it's from Drew getting hurt and Teddy coming in, Taysom coming in? Trevor coming in last week, that y'all have been able to kind of withstand some of the ups and downs of that position, injuries, all that stuff? I think the, the consistent thing is, number one, I, I think we've got a pretty good team, playing good defense, and uh, and we're rushing the ball pretty well. And so I, I think the, the two best allies for a quarterback are, you know, a running game and good defense. Um, it's hard playing that position if, you know, if you're not playing good defense, and it's hard playing that position if you can't run the football. Well, you guys have also invested in, in, the, in the people who are backing up your starter too the last couple of years. I mean, yeah. Teddy started games. And Look, it, it's. Well. It, I mean, it, it, you you have to feel like there's someone that can you can win games with if if, if there's a a change because of injury and, and the same thing applies to safety or corner. I mean, you, you want to, obviously we're looking for depth, um, but I, I think that's important. Sean, what's the key to like manufacturing yards after catch? I know that's something that Jameis said he was working on. Uh, from a passing standpoint? Yeah. Well, look, yards after catch from a quarterback standpoint is location. You know, are you keeping them on stride or are you making them turn? You know, so, Accuracy can lead to more yak. Um, inaccuracy can prevent that. You know, if you're having to like jump for a ball, then your feet aren't on the ground. You're, you, you know what I mean. So your your ball location can help with that. Sean, all the players pretty much expressed confidence in Trevor when we spoke to them yesterday. Obviously, we're not at practice. How have you seen him kind of take command of the offense he's, so far? I mentioned this last weekend. He's um, his person like. These guys all have different personalities, and I, I coached a player similar to Trevor's when I mentioned Ty Detmer. It's, it's kind of cool, calm, just you, you never see the the real highs or the real lows. That's his personality, and it works for him. And um, his preparation this week has been really good. Um, Taste him the same way. Um, but everyone has a different personality relative to how they play. And so his would be, um, his would be that way. You know, by example, he's got a good command of what we're doing, um, but, but pretty, you know, pretty flat line in a good way. How have you seen the players respond to him in practice and in the home? Good, I, I think there's, you know, I think he did a good job last week coming in in that moment. And, uh, you know, there's certainly a confidence in, in him and what we're doing. Is that Huh? How beneficial is it that he's been here for like about a year? I think that's important. Yeah, I think that's good because, you know, he's 
been in the system. He's, he's, you know, he understands it and he knows it. I, I think the same thing with Jameis and Taysom. You know, those guys have all been in it here for quite a quite a bit. And Ian is, you know, kind of getting it quicker now. Does that mean he'll, he'll be active this week? Both? Um, yeah, there, he'll probably be up too. Sean, as you uh, pass rush been what you kind of wanted to be the last couple of weeks like, since the bye? Yeah, like it's easy to just look at sacks, and then that's fine. Um, but you you, you want to look at third down efficiency. You want to look at the interceptions. I mean, uh, and you also want to look at hurries and hits and all of those things. I think we're doing a good job. Hey, Sean, I know you work with Terry Fontenot for years. Have you been able to see his, his footprint on that? Yeah, look, it's the first year. Those guys are grinding and working hard. Um, and, you know, it's hard to actually look at the film in, in year one. And, um, you know, and it's Arthur's first year as well. And, and so I know it's those are exciting times when your, your head coach and your general manager are both coming in together, you know, locking arm in arm. And, and I think that um, both of them have got great pedigree. And so we miss Terry. And, and it's good to see that, you know, he's got that opportunity, and um, I'm sure we'll exchange pleasantries after the game. Did Terry identify Trevor Simeon as the uh, uh, I can't, top quarterback listen, on the ready list? Yeah, I don't know. That'd be a good question. I can't, <laughs> I can't answer that honestly. Um, but uh, he, he, he did a, a fantastic job with us. Sean, two your your guys that you brought in or. Were... Uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame today, organizational Hall of Fame. Yeah. What do you think about that? Um, it was great. I didn't I didn't like the timing of the luncheon. <laughs> uh, I would have loved to have been there. Um, but both of them, when you look at Roman and Jari, um, that they were in that first draft class. Both of them, one second, I think one fourth. Both of them were picks that we traded down for. And so with Roman, we went back a few spots and acquired Jeff Fain. And so he started for us at center. And, uh, and then Roman, however, however many years, obviously had a great career. And Jari, in the fourth round, we had the two pick that year. And they used to have three rounds, and then you'd go the, the rest of the draft. So it was early morning, Texans up first, we're up second. And we're getting ready to select the tight end out of uh, Wisconsin, Owen Daniel. In fact, I'm on the phone with him. And the draft's beginning, and we're talking, and it just was coincidence that he and I went to the same high school. I didn't even realize it. And while we were on the phone, the Texans clicked in. Um, and he came back to me and said, Coach, I'm getting drafted by the Texans. Well, that was the, there was only one pick ahead of us. So the Texans selected Owen Daniel. Um, we traded back with the Philadelphia Eagles. We acquired Hollis Thomas. And then also, at that point, then drafted Jari Evans. So sometimes, um, you know, you're in that case, and Owen turned out to be a real good player. And Jari, uh, I think, is an eventual Hall of Famer in our league. Are you looking for a new or used vehicle? Well, come check us out at Barker Honda because we get new, updated inventory daily. We're offering top dollar for your trade. Give us the opportunity to buy your car. We offer new and used financing. Come check out our award-winning trucks. For cars, trucks, SUVs, come check us out. Our sales specialists can help find the vehicle just for you. We're getting new inventory daily. Come down and see us on Martin Luther King Boulevard and Home, and always remember, it's better at Barker. Tony Alford and Priscilla Larbinger have been the foundation of what is now Alford and Associates. Their passion and vision have been embedded company-wide. It's not just about insurance. It's about making sure that our community is strong and protected for the next generation. We analyze and then custom design your insurance policies to fit your business's needs, not the insurance carriers. It's quite simple. It's the mindset of our organization to protect you from life's hardships. Your benefits are our business. Domestic violence is daunting, and the psychological effects can do enduring damage. Obviously, all abuse needs to end, but how? The Terrebonne Parish District Attorney's Office is dedicated to ending domestic violence and helping those who have already experienced it. Our office supports many programs that educate and judicate abuse towards women. If you are a victim of abuse, call the Terrebonne Parish District Attorney's Office at 873-6500. 
Bacteria and germs run rampant in the air that surrounds us. It's more important than ever to keep our surroundings clean. Introducing BioPure. Specializing in commercial and residential disinfection applications, BioPure's advanced treatment process allows them to disinfect more services quickly and effectively with no inconvenience to staff or family members. Let BioPure help you create a better environment for everyone. Call for your free consultation today at 985-322-3003. I'm motivated to do well in school because for the future that I want for myself, it would really help me to do well in school so that way I don't have to do more work later or I don't have to work so, so much harder later. It's just good preparation for what I want to do in my future. Whenever I go to college, my course of study that I'm intending on pursuing right now is mechanical engineering. Was your business interrupted by Hurricane Ida? You may be entitled to compensation. Insurance companies may try to pay you much less than your losses or even deny your claim altogether. St. Martin and Bork and Hoffa's Duval are partnering together to fight for your fair payout. Go to myidaclaim.com for your free case review today. Never give up because your insurance company has denied your claim and never accept a lowball offer. Let St. Martin and Bork and Hoffa's Duval help you weather the storm. Visit myidaclaim.com today. Bayou Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. What's this, uh, what's this week been like for you? Uh, just kind of getting back into being the guy. It's been good, a little different. Uh, more reps, it's a little more involved physically, I'd say. I think as a backup, you're you're still pretty wired in. Uh, you're just not getting the physical reps, so that's been the change, I would say. But you don't you don't have any like emotional reaction to being <laughs> being in that position anymore. You just kind of. Uh... No, I think you know I I started a few games earlier in my career, so I think uh, you know it's not really new to me. It's not that foreign. I mean, it's been a while for sure, but. Uh, you know, I, I've been playing all along as if I'm going to get another chance to play now, whether it happened or not. Um, I didn't know, but that was my mindset last few years, probably. When did you know that you were going to get the start this week? Earlier in the week, coming in Wednesday. Trevor, all the teammates talk about how calm you are. Is that just sort of how you're wired? Just, just who you are, pretty much? I think maybe sometimes I look calm, and I'm, I'm not actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I think for me playing quarterback, there's so much going on. You're focused on so many details and orchestrating th certain things and um, trying to communicate clearly to your guys that I think that takes up a lot of my headspace. So yeah, I would just say that. How weird is it that you're playing your first start here against Arthur Smith, the guy who you yeah. work with? Yeah, I, I, I like Arthur a lot. Uh, I didn't spend as much time with him uh, as I would have liked, but then again, I, I'm here and uh, Things have worked out pretty well, but uh, yeah, he's a, he's a great football coach. I think he's going to do really well there. You haven't been here for all of it, but what do you think makes this team so successful at you know injury replacement for quarterback over the past couple of years? Uh, I think Sean and Pete and the, the offensive staff do a really good job um, playing to not only the quarterback strengths, but all 11 guys on offense that are on the field. And, putting them in good spots to, to be successful, and quarterback is certainly included in that. So uh, that, I think, the combination, the team is, is really, really good. And, you know, there's not a lot of players here that are kind of aloof. I think, for the most part, the pattern of players here, the guys you see are smart, tough football players. And um, for me, that's exciting to be in a group like that, included in a group like that. So. Your, your first response is kind of downplaying the emotional significance. Is that is that something you're you're trying to put it in perspective and not make it too big of a deal, or it's just you've been around long enough that that it doesn't create that much of a time? Yeah, I think I, I expect to play. I think I've 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 had a lot of confidence in myself uh, to play, um, and when it happened, you know, like I said, I didn't know if it was going to happen or when it was going to happen, but I knew I'd be ready, uh, and here we are. So. Um, you know, I expect to play well, just like everybody else on this team. So that's my mindset. And, yeah. How beneficial has it been for you that you've been here, you know, for about a year or so? 
yeah, just being around terminology, um, thinking what, what Sean and Pete and everybody's trying to do, how we're trying to attack defenses and, and be around the players and that familiarity, I, I don't think you can replace it. So uh, my wife was joking with me, this is you know the longest I've been with one club in, in a while, which isn't saying much. I think it's like not even been a year. So uh, hopefully I stick around. You guys got to face him. Obviously, he, he takes some snaps now. Then you coming out through college. Just what was that like for you, kind of being in that system uh, in college? Obviously, it was. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, I think it's just when, once it becomes normal, you make it work and figure it out. I think, you know, you hear some guys in situations like that, be it quarterback or any other position, you try to get in a rhythm and a flow of the game and um, things like that. But at the same time, I think you you have a job to do. What you know. Um, and then when the film comes on, nobody really cares. Did you go in and out of the game or what did you do? It's, you know, that's that's your tape. That's what you're putting out there. So uh, just staying focused and, you know, being a pro and, and trying to wor worry about your job, I think. Um, not just quarterback, but, you know, we sub personnel. It's like a small army coming on and off the field every, every play just about. So I think uh, a lot of guys kind of have that mindset. Having, a, having the week to, to prepare for this, or at least since Wednesday, um, what do those extra reps do for you? Do like, you, you feel like there's a chance to be more comfortable than you were coming into the game kind of cold last week? Yeah, I think just getting a feel for guys, uh, being in the first huddle, and just kind of seeing what guys like, reading body language of guys, receivers, tight ends. Um, you know, I haven't had a ton of reps, really any reps with, with that first group. So uh, just good to get those physical reps. You know, I've, I've been back there, and it's not like I'm coming in cold or – uh, it's my first time seeing the offense and everything, but just getting the physical reps is good. What was your mind type kind of like after your last start with, with the Jets? You know, it's, it's kind of like you finally get a chance to start again yeah. and then you, you just get unlucky with the injury. Is it hard, like the days following, months following, to not get down after something like that? I think, yeah, just looking back, I, I think injury is a big part of the game, right? And it's unfortunate and... Um, I think the biggest thing for for guys getting hurt is just not feeling sorry for yourself, and it's not it's not personal. It just happens, you know. So you probably take a day or two to, uh, if you want, to yourself. But um, after that, there's so much you know you're worried about recovery and all that, and um, you try to figure out during the times that you're not active, how can I be a better player and improve? And and I tried to do that. Um, 18, I think, 19. So. Teams, uh, teams climbing two right now, picking the playoff on. Do you even, do you even think about that stuff, or do you have to really just like legit, legit take it one day, one game? Yeah, I think if you start worrying about the big picture, I think it, you know, the the stuff right in front of you kind of can fall apart pretty quickly. I think uh, it's been proven over and over again how quickly things change in this league. So, just uh, you know, let's let's try to win this week and, and see what happens. Are you looking for a new or used vehicle? Well, come check us out at Barker Honda because we get new updated inventory daily. We're offering top dollar for your trade. Give us the opportunity to buy your car. We offer new and used financing. Come check out our award-winning trucks. For cars, trucks, SUVs, come check us out. Our sales specialists can help find the vehicle just for you. We're getting new inventory daily. Come down and see us on Martin Luther King Boulevard and home. And always remember, it's better at Barker offering historic values for good quality vehicles. As many of you know, we are facing unprecedented times. As an industry leader in South Louisiana, Trav Cadillac Chevrolet is not able to meet all inventory needs by our current market. We need more inventory, and that's good news for you. Come see our friendly staff at Trav Cadillac Chevrolet. If you are suffering from chronic cough, bronchitis, reactive airway, or persistent asthma that's difficult to control, or diagnosed with COPD, please listen carefully. You may be suffering from allergy sinus, bronchial asthma syndrome. For as we now know that undetected or uncontrolled infection in the upper airway can affect the lower respiratory tract. 
If this is happening to you, please call us for an evaluation. My role models would have to be my, my whole family. They, they push me to be my best on and off the field constantly. But here at South Terrible, my extracurricular activities are football, basketball, and baseball. In my free time, I enjoy spending time with family, working out, and fishing. Everyone needs help at some point during their life. The anxiety and sadness that you may be feeling right now can be conquered with the help of experienced counselors. The South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority call line is standing by right now, ready to assist you. Pick up the phone and call 1-877-500-9997 and let us help you through the crisis in your life. Helping people, changing lives. Let our caring staff help you today. Whether it's directions for out-of-towners or coffee for morning people, the Civic Stop has what you're looking for. From propane, air pump, 24-hour pay at the pump, and speed pass. We accept fuel man and also have an ATM on site. Fishermen stop here for bait and ice specials with a fill-up. Stop in for a free six-ounce cup of coffee till 8 a.m. And don't forget about Subway. Not only do we serve great Subway sandwiches, but breakfast too. So stop in and see the difference with friendly and helpful employees at the Civic Stop. 3040 Barrow Street next to the Civic Center in Homa. Bayou Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda.
Leg pain, swelling, or ulcers can be signs of vascular disease in the legs. This lack of blood flow can lead to amputation if not treated. Varicose or spider veins may also be signs of venous disease and are more than just a cosmetic problem. Trust the most advanced team of leg pain specialists at Cardiovascular Institute of the South to reopen blockages in the legs and offer minimally invasive in-clinic vein treatments. If you experience leg pain, swelling, or have visible veins, schedule an appointment with us today at cardio.com. Here at South Louisiana Bank, we support our neighbors, the organizers, the helpers, the leaders, the dreamers. We support those that move our community forward. Louisiana has grown from the dedication, commitment, and loyalty of the people who call this beautiful place home. We are proud to offer our services to the communities in South Louisiana. South Louisiana Bank, it's better when we bank together. If I lose my job, how will I support my family? When will all this unrest end? I wish I could control my anger. Do any of these thoughts sound familiar to you? If so, you are not alone. The South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority offers support, counseling, and treatment geared at helping you where you are right now in the midst of this pandemic and your own personal crisis. The South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority, helping people, changing lives. Broussard Dub handles business and residential hurricane claims. We have over 14 years experience dealing with insurance claims for hurricanes with proven results. We handled hurricane claims before Hurricane Ida and will be here for years to come after. We've recovered millions for business owners and homeowners. So if you need help with your hurricane claim, let us fight for you. Go to our website and fill out a form for a free claim review or give us a call. Broussard Dove, Attorneys at Law. This is Martin Falls live in Homa. We're in front of A Bears Motel where water is up to the doorknobs at the motel. Telephone poles almost completely to the ground. This storm had some fury to it. The following morning, Hurricane Andrew had taken its toll on Caravan Parish. But the stick doesn't lie. No. That, you know, they, they said it started moving north, northwest. That was a jog. It's a very tense day for Terrebonne Parish, levee after levee has been breached. You won't know until it equalizes how many of them have uh, actually broken. And I'm just looking at that stick shot again. That sent a circulation that moved back on the stick and Lafouche and Grand Isle to me are ground zero at this point. It's moving right up the stick and that stick goes directly over Grand Isle and Fouchon. Welcome to Balaam Drive with your host, John Martinoni, founder and president of the Bible Christian Society. Join John as he talks about all things Catholic, Catholic teaching, Catholic theology, Catholic morality, Catholic doctrine versus Protestant doctrine. But most of all, he will be talking about how you can learn to explain, defend, and share the Catholic faith using common sense, simple logic, and most importantly, the Bible. Today I'm going to give you an apologetic strategy that could get you out of pretty much any potential jam you get yourself into. And I mean any jam. In fact, this strategy can not only get you out of a potential jam, you can also use it to make a pretty devastating argument that strikes at the heart of Protestant theology. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in, in just a few minutes. But First, if, if you haven't caught one of the previous shows in this series, my name is John Martinoni, and I am the founder and president of the Bible Christian Society, and, and your host, obviously, for this program, Balaam's Ride. Glad to have you with us today. In this series, we've been doing the last few weeks, and we'll continue for the next several weeks on blue-collar apologetics. We've been talking about apologetic strategies, strategies that the average Catholic in the pew can use to go out and evangelize family, friends, coworkers, neighbors, and even strangers. Strategies that you can use to explain and defend the faith to others. The first three were, we, that we talked about were, number one, the ignorant Catholic strategy. Uh, the second strategy was how to be offensive without being offensive.